In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> And for all who offer here their worship. 
almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. for the second Sunday after the Epiphany is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 3. The young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel, Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come and see. 
Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Begins 
with Jesus calling Philip, and he says, quite simply, follow me. That's the word disciple. Disciple, a disciple is a follower of Jesus. So when Jesus says to Philip, follow me, what he's saying is, listen and go where I go. Follow after where I am going. Discipleship is kind of a language that we don't often use in the Lutheran church. I'm not entirely sure why. We just don't really talk that way very often. But it is a good term. To be a disciple of Jesus means to be a follower of Jesus. It means to listen, first of all, to what Jesus has to say. And he speaks to us quite clearly in his word. Maybe that's why we don't like the word disciple or discipleship. Listening might be the hardest thing to do in our culture today. It's easy to think about Samuel from our Old Testament reading from 1 Samuel 3. He lies down, God calls him, he gets up and goes to Eli. Eli says, go to bed. Three times this happens, and eventually, the third time, Eli finally, the light goes on, so to speak, and he says, okay, next time, the Lord calls, say, speak, Lord, for your servant listens. But all too often, we don't get to that third time. We are far too distracted. I can't listen to the word of God. I just got a notification on my phone. Clearly, that's more important than whatever God speaking to me or to you. Distraction is the enemy of discipleship. Discipleship, after all, at its heart, means listen and follow. Without the listening, there is no following. But listening is hard work. At least seems like it to us today. So God, in his great wisdom and mercy, has what we will call holy persistence in his word. He does not call you and me once, not twice, not even three times like he did to Samuel. Over and over and over again, the voice of God calls out in his word. Follow me. Or if you prefer, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The word of God cuts through our deaf ears. It cuts through our cold, stony hearts. It opens up your mind and heart so that you may hear what God has to give to you. One of the things that I like about that story of the call of Nathanael is that when Philip comes to Nathanael and says, we have found the Messiah, the King of Israel, Nathanael says, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? <laughs> now, Philip doesn't get into an argument with him. He doesn't just kind of smack him around. He simply says, Come and see. He lets Jesus be Jesus. He lets the mystery of the gospel be the mystery. All too often in our distraction-laden world, when it comes to telling other people about Jesus or spreading the gospel in any way, we're kind of afraid that if I don't have all of the answers lined up, if I don't have every argument kind of figured out ahead of time, then, well, then the whole thing's going to fall apart. But it is not so. Because Philip did not say to Nathaniel, follow me. He said, there's Jesus. 
follow him, as it were. And so Jesus continues that great, and holy, and persistent call. Now maybe his words to Nathaniel sum it up best. Nathaniel, after all, is impressed that Jesus saw him under the fig tree, and Jesus, in essence, says, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you're impressed by that, you will see greater things than these. Jesus makes this promise that you will see heaven opened and the angels of heaven ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. In other words, he says to Nathaniel, you will get a glimpse of the throne room of God itself. And there you will see everything that God has in store for you. And guess what? That is exactly what happens every time we gather in the divine service. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name. Again and again and again, again, God says to you, you ain't seen nothing yet. God's mercy is for you. Jesus says to you, follow me. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. We rise and confess the holy Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, you have called us into the fellowship and priesthood of your Son, Jesus Christ. By his incarnation and great work of salvation, heaven is open to us in him. Give us boldness to cling to your faithful call, that your deliverance would not be hidden, but spoken freely in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, preserve your church here and throughout the world. Send forth laborers into your harvest and sustain those you have sent, especially Matthew, our synod president, Michael, our district president, and Duane, our circuit visitor. Make all Christians bold in confession and unwavering in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Father, you have given us your Holy Spirit, making our bodies your temple and knitting us together into the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us courage and constancy to treasure your gift of holy marriage. Preserve your Christians in true chastity, the married in honorable faithfulness to one another, and the unmarried in honorable purity. For you have bought us with the precious price of your Son's blood to glorify you in our bodies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, you are the Lord, and you do whatever seems good to you. As every lawful authority on earth comes from you, 
Uphold in righteousness and health our nation with its leaders. Bless Donald and Michael, our outgoing president and vice president. Preserve in wisdom and honor Joseph, our president-elect, Kamala, our vice president-elect, Gavin, our governor, and all public servants, including our armed forces, police, and first responders. Send peace in our time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear O oh God, behold in mercy all for whom we pray, especially Lance, Jim, Patrick, Sarah, Arden, Heather, David, Tom, Lori, Wayne, Pat, Dick, Kathy, Russ, Heather, Tom, and Joanne, Tiffany, Renee, Robert, Nate, and Lene, Seth, and Robbie, Warren and Steve, Demetrius, Jordan, Bruce, Rosanna, Carol, and Lorraine. Bring healing, comfort, strength, patience, and certainty to all in need. Receive our thanks for your constant watch and merciful kindness. In every sorrow and every joy, do not let our eyes be drawn from the greater marvel of your kindness in Christ Jesus, by whose grace and forgiveness alone we receive every blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time in our service, we would normally receive our offering. You may either mail your offering in or sign up at our website to do so electronically. We continue with the offertory. <laughs> Give you peace. 